As new shoppers rush to buy the latest SUV or crossover for their growing family, sales of minivans are starting to fall. But if you're still one of the few that prefers a minivan as your family hauler, I have something here that you really need to pay attention to. My name is Omar, and this is the 2022 KN Carnival. It's really a Kia. The badge just looks like KN. I really like it. I think it's much better than the last one. The 2022 Kia Carnival. So really the Honda Odyssey, the Chrysler Pacifica, and the Toyota Sienna have always been the kings of the minivan segment. The Kia Sedona always lagged far behind, selling only around 15 to 20,000 units a year as compared to the big dogs that sell well north of 80, 90, or even 100,000 units. Well, Kia is hoping to change all of that with the new Carnival, and right off the bat, they have something very special here. Kia decided to go with a clean slate for the next minivan, so forget everything that you used to know about the Sedona. I mean, forget the Sedona altogether, because the Kia Carnival is so good that it may even steal some buyers away from the SUV and crossover segment. Now, before we get into our tour, let's talk about how the Kia Carnival drives. It's powered by a 3.5 liter V6 engine, pumping out 290 horsepower, which is good enough for your daily minivan needs. More importantly, this thing is insanely comfortable. I've been driving this around for a week, and I have to say, this is one of the most comfortable minivans out there. Not only that, it really feels well insulated, and because of that, it feels much quieter than the competition. There's not much to go on and on about here because this is a minivan after all. It does have some drive modes and when you pop it into sport mode, nothing really that exciting happens except the gauge cluster does a nice animation and it revs a little bit higher. But yeah, comfort wise, which is one of the most important things to minivan shoppers, this definitely checks the box. That said, let me give you a quick tour of the carnival and then I'll give you my opinion on how this stacks up against the competition. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, all right, let's do this. I always feel like I have a cheesy smile when I say, let's do this. It's very cheesy, I don't know why I do that. All right, so let's kick off this tour by taking a look at all the cool and interesting things that you should know about the new Kia Carnival. And since this is a minivan, we're going to start off by taking a look at the second and third row. Now, if you go for the Carnival SX Prestige, you'll get second row VIP lounge seats. Push this button right here and the second row will go into a full reclined position automatically so the people in the second row can really kick back and relax. That is pretty crazy, to be honest. Not only that, you can bring up a footrest so you can chill in the ultimate lap of minivan luxury. Oh, and I totally forgot to mention, you also have something called wing out headrest so you can literally adjust it to hold your head in place while taking a nap. Now, those aren't the only adjustments you can make to the second row seats in the Carnival. This latch right here will allow you to move the second row forward and backward which you can do in other minivans, so it's not that surprising. But in the Carnival, you can use another latch to go side to side, which is something I haven't seen in many minivans. Now let's talk about getting into the third row. The easiest way is to just walk through the middle of the second row. And at this point, you're probably wondering, doesn't the second row fold up and forward or do some cool transformation to make it easier for you to climb into the third row? Well, not in the SX Prestige. Since the VIP lounge seating already has so much going on, you can't just fold them forward. You basically have to use the seat controls and wait. That said, let's climb into the third row and see what you're working with. I'm about six foot tall, so climbing even through the middle of the second row is a bit challenging for me. But once you get back here, the legroom isn't that terrible because I've moved this seat all the way forward. So the second row slides forward and backwards as I showed you earlier. I moved this one all the way forward. This one's all the way back. And even with it all the way back, it's still not that bad. And once you get back here, there's not that much excitement. You have some cup holders, some storage, a USB-A port, and a shade, which you don't see quite often in the third row. Next up, the Carnival SX and the SX Prestige come with a dual screen rear entertainment system. And it's not just any entertainment system. You've got two touchscreen displays on the back of the front seats, and the whole system actually has built-in apps. So you can read the news, listen to sounds of nature, or watch the latest episode of Squid Game on Netflix. You can also watch your favorite streamer on Twitch or watch the latest car review by Omar Drives, which is what I would do. I recommend watching that. Now, if you have younger children, you can activate the kids theme. There you have things like Baby Shark, any USB content that you might want to load here, or YouTube Kids. That is very cool and very convenient. 
And if you're sitting in the second row and you need to tell the front row passenger something important and say they can't hear you because, you know, they're so far away, you can just hit this button right here and your voice will be heard in the front row. Now, quickly, before we move into the front row, the Carnival SX Prestige comes with dual power sunroofs. That's right, both of the sunroofs open all the way so people in the second row can stick their head out and enjoy life. I'm just kidding, don't do that, it's very dangerous. All right, now let's hop into the first row and check out all the cool features you have up here, mainly around how the first row can communicate with the second and third row. Now we've seen passenger talk a few times in other Kia, Hyundai, and Genesis models, and that will allow you to project your voice through the speakers for the second row and third row passengers to hear you better. But the Kia Carnival also has something called passenger view. Click it and you can get a better view of what's going on in the second and third row. You can double tap to zoom in on each passenger and you can also activate passenger talk right here from the screen. Now, if your kids in the second row and third row are sleeping, you can activate quiet mode and move all the sound to the front so the rear passengers can get some rest. That said, I can go on forever and ever because the Kia Carnival has a bunch of cool and interesting features, but a lot of them I've covered in my other Kia Hyundai Genesis reviews. I'll link some of them in the description below and you can check them out for a deeper dive, but let's do a quick rapid fire session covering some of the more important ones. Like other high-end Kia trim levels, the Carnival SX Prestige also gets a digital gauge cluster display. Nothing too fancy though, it'll do some animations as you circle through the drive modes, and that's about it. Funny thing here is that the Carnival looks like it's on a racetrack when you're in sport mode. Who out there is taking the Carnival on the track? You do get these really useful blind spot cameras like on other Kia, Hyundai, and Genesis models. I think more automakers should definitely do this. You also have a 3D surround view camera for the Carnival, which makes it useful when parking this big minivan. Cool thing here is that you can actually zoom in and also zoom out. Never seen that before. And yes, this also has sounds of nature, so you can relax from your everyday commute road rage. And like most other Kia, Hyundai, Genesis models, you also have the smart trunk or smart tailgate, where you just walk up to the back and if your key is in close proximity, the trunk will just pop open. But, and I just discovered this, the Kia Carnival also has smart doors. It works the same way as smart trunk, so if your key is in close proximity of the sliding doors, they will pop open. Very useful for parents who are carrying their kids or a bunch of items to pop open the door without using their hands. So how much do you pay for this Carnival ride? Well, pricing starts at $32,100 for the LX trim, the EX starts at $37,600, and the top of the line SX Prestige starts at $46,100. As tested here, you're looking at $47,770. That said, if you want all the bells and whistles that you see here, you'll have to ball out and go for the SX Prestige. I see most buyers starting at the EX trim because the LX trim is pretty bland on the inside. The LX does get a long list of standard features like an 8-inch touchscreen display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but overall it feels very budget. The EX is where things start getting a little interesting with the upgraded 12.3-inch touchscreen display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as navigation. You also get tri-zone climate control, heated front seats, which by the way, you can get on the LX only if you go for the seat package upgrade. The EX also adds the smart power tailgate along with highway driving assist with navigation-based adaptive cruise control. You also get a few exterior and interior upgrades like 19-inch alloy wheels and better accent trim on the inside. And then the SX is where things start getting a little bit more luxurious with everything from the EX plus ventilated seats, cooled front seats, I will never call them ventilated seats. You also get the 360 surround view camera. The rear entertainment becomes standard here, although you can add it on other trims for an extra $1,500. And then again, you get a bunch of exterior and interior upgrades like a sharper matte chrome grille, 19 inch gloss black wheels, and a bunch of chrome trim. On the inside, you get this really cool 3D accent trim, which I really like the design of. Now, if you want to ball out and go all the way like my test model here, you'll have to go for the SX Prestige, and that will obviously give you the VIP lounge seating. You'll also get a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster display with the blind spot cameras, a 12 speaker Bose sound system, which is not that bad. You'll get real leather seats with some embossing and perforation. And then you also get a heated steering wheel along with heated and cooled second row seats. And of course you get the dual power sunroof. All right, let's talk horsepower and torque power it comes from a 3.5 liter V6 pumping out 290 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. And that's made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. And not that minivan buyers are concerned with zero to 60 times, but the Carnival will do zero to 60 in 7.4 seconds with a top speed of 118 miles an hour. I have it in accessory mode, so don't complain about the check engine lights being on. Drive modes wise, you're working with normal, eco, sport, and smart. And when it comes to fuel economy, you're working with 19 city and 26 highway. You have a 19 gallon tank capacity. I'm averaging 
after a few days of driving, a total of, let me just zoom in and focus, 20.4 miles a gallon. So what do I think about the exterior design of the Carnival? Honestly, this is the best looking minivan out there. In my opinion, the Carnival has a pretty aggressive yet classy design, which is hard to find in the minivan segment. The SX and the SX Prestige look a little bit sharper with a more prominent grill that really gives it a bold front end. I like how the headlamps and the daytime running lights look and how the high beams have been integrated into the grill. From the side, the SX and the SX Prestige get really cool blacked out 19 inch wheels which might be a bit of a stretch for a minivan, but still cool nonetheless. And all Carnival trims get this really stylish 3D aluminum design element right here. Looks pretty dope. The rear ends of minivans I feel are a bit of an afterthought, but I like the back of the Carnival. The SX Prestige actually gets a more stylish taillight design than other trim levels. Now, before we check out the inside, let's check out the cargo capacity. You can pop the trunk using the smart trunk feature. You can use your keys or you can use a button located right down here. And once you get it opened, you have a total of 40 cubic feet behind the third row, 87 cubic feet behind the second row. And with all the rows folded, you have 145 cubic feet. So you have plenty of room. Now let's hop inside and check out the inside of the new Carnival. And just like the outside, I think the interior is one of the best in the segment. I would recommend starting at least at the EX trim if you want a more upgraded look and feel because the front center console area on the LX looks pretty bland. EX and above just feel better and more luxurious with the bigger 12.3 inch touchscreen display tries on climate control with a more upgraded feel to the center section right here. And again, if you want all of the bells and whistles, including leather, tech, comfort, you'll have to go for the SX Prestige. Overall, the inside of the Kia Carnival is a very comfortable place to be, which is the number one priority for minivan shoppers. And before I give you my opinion on how the Kia Carnival stacks up against the competition, let me point out a few random things that I'll have to show all of you. You have eight cup holders, two in the front for the front passengers, two in the back for the second row passengers, and then you have four in the back for the third row passengers, which I never really understand why third row passengers need that many cup holders, two on the right side and two on the left side. And here are what the keys look like to the Kia Carnival. You got the new Kia logo, your sliding door buttons, your remote start and your lock button. Door open and close sound from the outside and from the inside. Not that bad. And of course, charging game wise, you have a lot going on here. You have a wireless charger right there, three USB ports right there, one for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Projection, two just for charging. Second row passengers are working with two USB A ports on the front seat backs, one right there for the left passenger and one right there for the right passenger. And they also get a household outlet right there and a cigarette lighter charger right there. And then third row passengers get two USB A ports, one right there and one right there and now it's time to listen to the indicator and horn of the 2022 kia carnival indicator first pretty standard hyundai kia genesis indicator and now for the horn sound oh yeah a lot of authority for when you're driving down the road with a minivan pretty awesome and now that i've given you a tour of the kia carnival let me give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy this over the honda odyssey the toyota sienna the chrysler pacifica and any other SUV or crossover for that matter. All right, let's get to it. Now, it's definitely hard for any newcomer to a segment that has longtime champions. And yes, the Carnival is a replacement to the Sedona, but I consider this a completely new option to the segment. And it faces some really tough competition. Here's what I would say. If you're worried about fuel economy, and most minivan shoppers definitely are, I would just go for the Toyota Sienna. The Sienna is only available as a hybrid. They've gotten rid of every other engine option but it will give you a fuel economy of 36 miles per gallon combined, which no other minivan will do. The Carnival, on the other hand, puts up similar fuel economy numbers like the Chrysler Pacifica and the Honda Odyssey. But in terms of luxury, comfort, tech, and convenience, there's really nothing better than the Carnival right now. It can do things that even luxury SUVs or crossovers can't. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit like, make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Peace. This is the only time in my life that I've ever considered, hey, maybe one day if I buy a minivan, it would be this. The Telluride needs everything that this has, and that would be perfect for me. By the way, if you haven't seen Squid Game, what are you even doing? Go watch that right now, after you watch some more of my reviews.